lead us into worship in 411. I want to walk as a child of the light. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God. You know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
indeed. To our precious Lord, who takes our hand. The epistle from 1 Corinthians, chapter 8. Paul speaks about those things which might offend the weak in faith. And says that what is important is not our rights, but rather serving our neighbor. And especially um, those whose faith might be weak. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul says, Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, yet he does yet not know as he ought to know, but if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so, by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. We invite our Sunday school choir forward at this time.
an amazing, powerful, spectacular thing, like when he heals somebody. Or, yep, a miracle. Yeah, that's a miracle. Things that only God can do. And you know what? God considers every one of you to be a miracle. He considers you to be someone who is special and precious. Someone loved. A miracle. In Isaiah, we have one of my very favorite Bible passages where God says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. That's how much God loves us. He knows your name. He died for you. He loves you. He made you. He claims you as his own. You are special in his sight. You're a miracle. God's own child. What a good thing. Join in prayer. You repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for your power. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you for making me and giving me faith. You know my name and you love me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I have bracelets here. They say, I have called you by name. You are mine. <clears throat> you have a bracelet, and then you can go back and sit with your parents. Page 192. 
too, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles to read. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Continue with our sermon here. Text in, in two parts. And, and the first 
is the question. What is going on? We just read the words today and they seem kind of normal, nothing spectacular. But the reality is, as those words were read, it's chaos, astonishment. This man is different. His teaching, it's, it's radical. It's not like anything they've ever heard. It's not like the scribes, the religious leaders. They would spend their time quoting other scribes, the interpretations of those who have gone before, instead of letting Scripture interpret Scripture, as they ought to have done and as we are to do as well. After all, in their midst, here is Jesus. He's the Word. And so He interprets Scripture. He is Scripture interpreting Scripture. Jesus in the flesh, the scribes, they would spend all of their time in the sermon talking about how to keep the law, all the possibilities under the law, when you could or when you couldn't do something. What if an animal fell into a pit when you rescue it? But what if it happened on the Sabbath, the day of rest when you're not supposed to work? What trumps what? Can you rescue your animal? Or do you leave it there? Can you save that animal's life or not? And they spent their time thinking about such things, but not in the deeper and true meanings of the law, not in the things of the heart, only outward actions. And here comes Jesus, a new kind of teaching. What is this? A man who speaks with authority. There's a new focus. It's on scripture, not on the scribes. It's on gospel, not on law. On God, not on man. What God is doing, not what man is supposed to do. Jesus speaks the word. In fact, Jesus is the Word. And the people, they're asking, what is this? Bus is close. What's going on? The people, obviously, they're not expecting God to be among them, walking among them as a human. What's going on? The people are confused. And, and so, too, in our text are the evil spirits. Evil spirits, they don't think much of human beings. Evil spirits think of us as something to be manipulated. They think of us as weak and, and frail. They think of human flesh as a bad thing. It was Satan's disdain for human flesh that led him and us into trouble. Adam and Eve fell. So have we. The unclean spirit in our text. He's surprised that God would hide in human flesh. The evil spirit doesn't mind hiding in human flesh. Be surprised that a good spirit, that Jesus would be in a human body. The evil spirits are caught off guard by what is going on. They know something is out of order. Bus is loose. In our text, 
the evil spirit says, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? You're the Holy One, not us. Why have you come here? Why are you in a human body? Have you come to destroy us? Is this the moment we have feared, that we have been dreading? That you're coming to lock us forever into hell? Is this the end? I know who you are, the evil spirit hisses. You are the Holy One, God. And instantly Jesus says, Be silent. Come out. And the evil spirit obeys. He has no choice but to obey the voice of God. And the people, they are amazed again. They were amazed at Jesus' teaching. And now they are even more amazed. What is this, they say? First, a new teaching with authority. And now, unclean spirits obeying this man? What is this? Who is this? People ask. And that brings us to the second part of our text and message this morning. Who is this? What is this? The answer, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth, God in human flesh. It's the incarnation. Jesus becoming one of us. It's a surprise. A surprise for the people. They didn't expect God to look like one of them. Surprise for the evil spirits. They did not expect God to enter into a human body. They thought the human body was, was frail and weak and of no good account. But God considers our bodies part of His special creation that He has made, that He loves, that He finds worth redeeming, worth coming to rescue Jesus of Nazareth, this God who lived in a real place, this God who was a real person, a real Savior. Jesus comes in a hidden way. The people, even the evil spirits, are confused. There, there's a hiddenness. As we read the Gospel of Mark, a hiddenness of Jesus. But that's because the high point, it's not right here in our text. The high point, it wasn't Christmas or his birth. The high point is going to be the cross. Mark is leading us to the cross, leading us to Jesus' death. There will be the ultimate victory, the ultimate defeat evil spirits, the ultimate rescue, redemption of God's people, there is salvation. What is going on? God has entered this world. God has entered humanity. The Old Testament is fulfilled. The new Moses has come. And as the people said to the old Moses, we don't want to see God in all of his glory. Let God speak through you. So God again comes, not in a blaze of glory, but in the prophet Jesus, in human flesh, that he might actually live and walk and be able to be among the people. Just as the 
the people listened to Moses, as they were to listen to him and every word that he spoke, so we listen to Jesus, to each word that he speaks. God holds us accountable to hear the words of Jesus, for them to fill our hearts and minds and lives. What is going on? We know what is going on. We know what is here in our text. Jesus coming to rescue us. Yes, it was chaos in our text. Chaos in the physical world. Chaos in the spiritual world. A new order. The people, our text says, they were amazed. And this text, this act of God, it is amazing. Not just for them, amazing for us. That God indeed would become one of us. That God would take on our flesh. That God would take our place on the cross. That God would conquer the evil one. That God would redeem us, body and soul, and open heaven for each of us. That's our God, Jesus of Nazareth, who comes with a new teaching, a new word, a word of life, of gospel, a word of salvation, a word that conquers evil and redeems each of us. And that, my friends, is the way that it is this fourth Sunday after the Epiphany in the year of our Lord. 2018. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Jesus. It's a life everlasting. Amen. We stand and sing, Create in me a clean heart, O God. morning we include um, Ivy Diedrich's sister Merdine who fell and uh, broke her hip this past week. Um, 
along with all those who are listed in the bulletin. We rise for prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you have entered into our history. That in your Son, Jesus, you have come in an amazing and surprising way, but in the perfect way that we might be saved and rescued, that the evil forces might be defeated, and that we might have eternal life. Help us always to trust in your Son, in Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the work of all missionaries as they speak this word of your Son, that they might proclaim the saving gospel and your Spirit might give the gift of faith. Be with us, make us missionaries here in this place to share this same gospel, that your Spirit here might create faith and add to your church add to your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, we pray that you would be with the families who mourn, that you would surround them with your love and care. Especially we pray this day for the families of Brian and Jerry and all who mourn. Enable their ears to hear your word. Be their rock. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of life. We pray for your blessings upon your servant Roy as he celebrates a birthday this week and upon all who celebrate special days. Grant them your blessing. Fill them with your presence and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we pray for those who are ill. We know that, that in you there is power and authority, that you have made our bodies, that you can heal them. We pray, O oh Lord, according to your will for your healing, for Jim, Betty, Werner, James, for Merdeen, Linda, Dan, Elaine, Jerry, Lois, Arlo, Bob, Corey, Lori, Mike, Colleen, Shar, Joan, Gray, Andy, Kitty, Tammy, Steve, Lester, Andrew, for Dave and Sally, Aiden, Mary, for Jackie and Jan, for those we name in our hearts. Lord, enable each one to know your presence and your love. Lord, in your mercy. And Almighty God, we pray for ourselves that your Holy Spirit would fill us this week, that in all that we do and say, we might be witnesses to the truth, that you would empower us, help us to live holy and godly lives, to hear your word, to be filled with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.
to those who are visiting today. Good to have you with us. I pray God's blessings upon you this coming week. Everyone's invited downstairs uh, for coffee. Uh, following that, um, at 10.30, uh, both uh, Sunday school for the children, and then it's our annual voters meeting. That will be in the fellowship hall. Um, all adult members are invited and encouraged to attend. Uh, this morning is also the, the last day for ordering the subs that our kids are making uh, for the Super Bowl weekend next weekend. There's a sign-up sheet on the counter if you're interested in doing that. It's also the last day to check your directory information, make sure that your phone and address and all that we have is, is correct. If not, uh, please, uh, please write in what is right. We'll be printing those uh, this coming week. Also, annual reports. Uh, for the, the year we're finished this week, so they're in the mailboxes. There's some extras below. Uh, take one uh, to look at uh, the things that we as a congregation are involved with. On the calendar this week, uh, put care on Thursday morning. Elder Mel, all uh, women are invited Thursday afternoon. Um, next Saturday, uh, Pastor Dan Jastrom, who's a father who was pastor here a few years ago, uh, he's now a missionary in Japan, Pastor Dan Jastrom. He'll be preaching on Saturday night and then having a mission presentation after that. Um, so you're all invited, encouraged uh, to be here to uh, see him and, and listen to him as well. Pray the Lord be with each of you. Keep you in his care this coming week. Mm -hmm.